Good morning, everyone. We're so glad you're here on this Sunday morning. We're going to start our service right this very minute by singing our opening chant, God is All There Is. Here we go. God is all there is. God is all there is. I am one with God, cause God is all there is. Joy happy to see you and I want to greet you whether you are in this room or perhaps you were on a Facebook room or a Zoom room. We are all here together to move up into that upper room of understanding and consciousness and love. Um, I want to give you a few little um, things here. Would you please silence your cell phones and let's turn within and set the tone for today, shall we? Okay, so I just invite everyone to simply take a breath and anchor in the recognition that there is one power and one presence. It is infinite, it is love, it is God, it is spirit, it is that universal light, which no matter what we call it, it is that which informs, which loves, supports, and sustains each and every one of us. And I know that it surrounds and fills us this day and connects us. And from that knowing, from that deep knowing, and that, ah, that anchoring in faith, I know that today unfolds with a sense of order and peace and joy and humor and that all of it, all of it is perfect in its way. I know that that which needs to be heard is heard, that which needs to be said is said. I bless the music knowing that it lifts us up and allows us to open to a place that perhaps we haven't before to have greater awareness and understanding. And I bless Dr. Mark knowing that he is that clear, wonderful channel for inspiration, for intention. And I know that we each are receptive to that which wants to bless us and which wants to lift us up. And what a glorious knowing it truly is. I bless our Facebook staff and, and anchors. I bless our Zoom anchors. I bless all of you who are hosted. I bless all of you who are watching, whether you are here or you are out in the virtual community. We love you, we bless you, and we are glad that you are part of this. And we know that energy has no limits. You are one with this experience. So I just, hmm, I invite you to breathe through all of it and enjoy it. And know with me that there is gratitude for the experience. And I release this word. And knowing it is so, I declare, and so it is. And I invite you to join with me and to say, Amen.
gifts of God are in my life. Now, would you rise and join us in saying the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, thy thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. So I'm going to invite you to remain standing because we're going to do our congregation song, which is I Am at Home in the Heart of God. notes. This is the first time I've been up here as um, Reverend Mark LaPonce, so just, you see the resemblance, right? (laughs) All right. Right now we're going to take the time to join together in just a five-minute meditation. This is where we get to center and we get to listen. So I invite you to simply, if you're comfortable, close your eyes, relax your body, relax into that chair, be where your body is, and begin to observe your breathing. And if you find yourself at any point with a mind that wanders, just bless that and allow yourself to come back easily, gracefully, and lovingly. Hmm. I think I do this now. is the love that I am.
Sometimes my highest good leaves me feeling lower than something neath my shoe. And as I stand here shaking and shredded, I search my soul for something else to do. Cause no one wants to feel this way And gifts aren't always gracious And heaven help us on that day When our darkest fears they face us I wanna keep walking in their better times unfolding and I will unleash these inner demons and pay better mind to what I am holding I will release this breath that holds me helpless here beneath my skin and I will remember there's a peaceful kingdom waiting within. Two steps forward, three steps back. Got no business focusing on what I lack. To be the present in every day. Self and others is what I pray. Whatever challenges this heart may meet, I hold your power within me. I am complete. Let the storm clouds rage on a blood red dawn with your grace. Unleash these inner demons and pay better mind to what I'm holding. I will release this breath that holds me helpless here beneath my skin, and I will remember this peaceful kingdom.
Right, good morning. good morning. Welcome, all of you in person and you in virtual land. We are glad you're here, glad you're part of our church community. I'm going to talk today a little bit about a blessing and a curse. Um, now, Ernest Holmes uh, started writing in the 20s, the 1920s. Uh, he first published in about the mid-20s. And so what happens after that? We have a depression after that. There's a war. And so when Ernest Holmes was compiling this philosophy, this teaching, he felt like there were spiritual principles that if people applied them to their life, any and every person could make their life experience better. They could lift their life experience up a little bit by applying these principles. Now, Ernest, um, our founder's church was down on 6th and Berendo, uh, downtown here. And so uh, Ernest was very close to the Wilshire Corridor. And I remember reading in his writings that he said that he met these wonderful people who belonged to these other churches, and they loved their church, but the church didn't give them something to make their life on earth better. It didn't give them practical tools. And this is very much um, Ernest's focus, was that he wanted our teaching to be really practical so that people could see the evidence of the teaching making their life better on a daily basis. So one of the things, uh, so Ernest had a radio show called This Thing Called Life, or This Thing Called You. It was The Thing Called Something. I don't remember what it was. <laughs> he called it something. But anyway, he had a radio show, and he would always start the show with this. He would say, there's, a, now you have to imagine like this great um, main accent. And he'd say, yeah, there's a power for good in the universe, and you can use it. Now, that, that did kind of sound like him, didn't it? And, uh, but that, that right there is the introduction to our teaching, that there is a power in the universe that we have access to and we can use it to create a greater good in our life, uh, happier conditions, financial prosperity, loving relationships, abundance, uh, whatever it is. So now in Deuteronomy, in the Old Testament, it says this, it says, Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. A blessing if you obey the commandments, and a curse if you will not obey the commandments. So superficially, I would read this, and, and superficially, it looks like God blesses us when we please God, and that God curses us when we displease him. Now, science of mind teaches us that God neither blesses nor curses. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So God is busy being God, which means that God is, for us, the love and intelligence that creates the entire universe out of itself. Therefore, there is love and intelligence, intelligence in and through all of us, in and through all of us. Um, now, we also say, or I certainly like to say, that God is the good to which there is no opposite. So there is always, always the goodness of God. So because God is love but also law, Right? Ernest Holmes teaches us that God is love and law. Because God is law, the law must remain neutral and impersonal. And the, what the law does is the spiritual law that we are talking about, the law that we're working with, responds and corresponds to our attitudes, our actions, and to our belief. So Ernest Holmes says that every law of nature is a blessing or a curse depending upon how we contact it. In other words, depending upon how we work with the law. So this is true of the other laws in nature. You know, you um, can light your home with electricity. Hey, that's a blessing, isn't it? But if you were a little kid like I was, and when we used to have put out the Christmas lights, and remember the Christmas lights on the tree used to be huge? I mean, you, you could watch the meter on your house when you plugged in the Christmas lights. It would just go, <laughs> go really, really crazy. And every year, every year when I was little, I remember my parents saying, don't stick your finger in those sockets. Don't stick your finger in those sockets when we take out the bulbs. And I always had to. I was just that kid who always, I'd wait for them to not look. And I'd go, and go, ah! you know, it was like one of those, like, you, my hair stood up. So I'd get that little shock. Now, the problem was not electricity. The problem was in my misuse of the electricity. The electricity was supposed to light our house. It was doing a good job with that. My misuse of the electricity is that I stuck my finger in the socket like a dummy. So every, every law in nature can be a blessing or a curse depending upon how we use it. So Moses is leading the Hebrew people on a journey to the promised land. And at some point, Moses goes up on the mountain and comes back with the Ten Commandments. Right. Now, you have to remember that people were tribal people back then. 
These were not uh, well-educated people for the most part. They have been enslaved by the Egyptian pharaoh for a long time. So as soon as Moses stops telling them to behave and he goes up the mountain, they get wild, right? They're just being crazy people. And so Moses come back, comes back and just will condense the story. Here are 10 commandments. Now, if we look at this from a place of spiritual consciousness, I believe, from the evolution of human consciousness, God gives Moses the Ten Commandments as a way for human consciousness to evolve. The law has to be introduced for us individually to evolve spiritually, right? And so what does this mean to us? To get, to get out of that place where clearly the Hebrew people felt they were under the Pharaoh, it, to get out of victim consciousness, we come into a relationship, a creative relationship with the law of mind, right? Because the law lifts us up, right? From, uh, lifts us up from what? From undeveloped consciousness. Oh, I have input into this. I can do something to improve my state of mind, my experience, my health, whatever. So the people with Moses, the people who are traveling with Moses, the Hebrew people, are mostly undeveloped consciousness, right? There's little light within the individual soul at this point. Uh, there, was, uh, there was only the, the collective thinking, the herd mind, if you will, right? But now, with the law, through the Ten Commandments, people could begin to live in accord with the commandments, right? Because as an individual, see, it's only an individual consciousness that can choose a better path, that can choose something of a higher order. Only an individualized consciousness, right? And so this is what the law allows us to do. It allows us to individuate away from the herd mind, you know, and really start our own spiritual journey. So as an individual, we could, the, these, the Hebrew people could begin to follow the Ten Commandments or not, right? And again, only an individuated consciousness can choose to evolve. So as individuals, I think we have free will. I think absolutely we have choice. We can choose to do nothing. That's a choice. We can choose in accord with spiritual law. And, and if we choose in accord with spiritual law, we will evolve, we will grow, we will heal. So life returns to the thinker what we think. This is what Ernest Holmes teaches us again and again in The Science of Mind, that life returns to the thinker what we think. So Jesus said, if we live by the sword, we die by the sword. And so to me, this is why we have to find a better way. This is why we have to find a better way of being in the world. So yes, it's done unto us as we believe. Absolutely, we have heard that, right? But that's the law in operation. It's done unto us as we believe. Well, so many of us believe so many different things. How can that be possible? Because the law responds to what we think. So when, as we learn to work with the law, the law can be the thing, uh, can be a thing of freedom or, and our life gets better. But if we don't learn to work with the law intelligently, the law becomes a thing of bondage and our life continues to get more and more limited. So in our teaching, there is no apartness from the spirit, right? We are one with God. This is the revelation of the mystics, oneness. We are one with God, we are one with each other, we are one with love, it's one with all life, one, 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 one. So it makes sense to me that if we are all connected, right, if we're all connected, now think about this, really. If we are all connected, how I treat you, how I speak about you, how I even think about you is coming back to me. See, this is the karma that we talk about. This is, this is always, always, always an operation. I remember years ago, God, 40 years ago, I'd come to Los Angeles and I was working in a restaurant and one night, I heard somebody say this. They said, well, you know, what goes around comes around. And I said, what? And they said, what goes around comes around. Haven't you heard that? And I said, no, tell me more. And they had nothing more to say. But, <laughs> but it was the first time I heard I remember writing it down on a napkin. You know, and I took that home and was like, what goes around comes around. What does this mean? Well, of course, as soon as you start to ask the question, the universe starts to, to bring you the answer. So. Um, so here's an example, I think. Um, I have a sister back east, I'm very close to her, and she uh, had a great job. She was the uh, assistant to the president of a, of a company, and, uh, and she just loved her job. Well, after many years, the boss decided he was gonna sell the company, but part of his sale of the company included a job for my sister, 
Now, of course, my sister did not get to be the assistant to the president of the new company. Uh, but she, had, you know, she was happy she was going to work a few more years, and then she'd retire, and so that all seemed pretty good. Well, what happened was she got a new boss, or, or at some point a new boss came in, and, um, and this was a, now, uh, let me say this is all before uh, Me Too, the Me Too movement. Um, so um, this boss came from another country, and in that country there was a practice of treating women differently than we believe how women should be treated here in the U.S. of A. Um, and so she would, uh, when we would talk every week, she would complain to me about this boss and what he was doing and what he was doing. And she felt like he was actually trying to force her out because um, she came with so many years uh, of experience and so she was paid more than other employees and she got more of a vacation than other employees. And, he kind of, and she said he, she got the definite impression from him that he felt he could replace her with somebody who was about 18 years old and, uh, and they would do the same thing. Uh, as her. So finally, she, I convinced her, you have to go to HR. You have to talk to HR about this uh, because of the circumstances. And so like I said, the boss was from another country, and they treated women differently. Now, so basically, how it panned out was that human resources told her that his situation trumped hers. Because he was from another country um, and uh, a different religion, that that would be a, law, a bigger lawsuit than just um, my sister feeling she was being treated unfairly and badly. So what happened was eventually he uh, let my sister go. And she was devastated by this because my sister is really responsible and a good worker and all that stuff. She was really, really, really upset that she'd been you know, um, unfairly wronged and badly treated and penalized for actually being successful at what she does. And so she was, and she'd always had great, great reviews, but she's let go. And so we talk about this and talk about this and talk about this. And finally I said to her, I said, look, honey, you have to let this go and move forward with your life. Do you realize that if you can really let this go, I mean really let it go, stop the whole thing about him being a bad guy and you were treated unfairly and you're a victim. See, this is the thing. No healing comes from victim consciousness. We can never, ever be a victim enough that we get healed. Right? And my sister, God love her, and she is my favorite person in the world, was really ensconced in victimhood in this particular area. Right? And so, you know, she starts to work on it. She starts to work on it, starts to work on it. And one of the things I came on, came up with eventually as we talked about this is I said, look, Leslie, in the Bible it says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. So what does that mean? What does that mean? Well, to me, that means that the law is always in operation. So I never have to waste any energy or effort or even a thought on other people getting theirs. You know what I mean by getting theirs, getting what should be coming to them. You know, that God is always saying, I will take care of it. This is what the vengeance is mine means. Because the universe, I believe, is always seeking to balance the scales, right? And so if you put good out here, good's coming back to you from somewhere else, the scales have to balance. If you put bad out, mm, bad's going to come back somewhere because the scale has to balance. Right? And so I remember I kept saying to her, you know, you've got to just, just let it go. How can I let it go? You just let it go, right? So I said, if you can forgive and let it go, God can use this to bless you, right? So I know this becomes a stretch for us when we're in a challenging situation with somebody and we think... No, I've just been wrong. There's no way God can use this situation to bless me. It's their pro They need to change. They need to be different, right? So absolutely, over time, she did let it go. And indeed, her life got infinitely better, infinitely better. And I'd say to her, whenever she would bring up the old situation, I would say, but I said, you made out. Your life got better. See, th this was someone who intended harm, essentially, to her. But there's that statement in the Bible is they meant it for my harm, but God used it for my good. And I believe that if we are willing to let something go and we surrender our attachment to it and we give up the story and we do that again and again and again, God can actually use that material for our greater good. And that's absolutely what happened. So eventually what happened, just so you know the rest of the story, because I know that I'm famous for not finishing the story, so I will tell you the rest of the story, that after my sister left that company um, and her life got so much better, that boss was eventually fired, and, um, and my sister did not have to sully herself with any of that, right? You know, so when, 
When people behave badly, first of all, when people behave badly, they're in fear. That's just the case across the board, I believe. But God always has a greater good in mind. So, and for that good to manifest, I think we have to be willing to let go of the past, let go of the story, let go of that whole they done me wrong, and absolutely, absolutely begin telling yourself right now today, I am never a victim. I am never ever a victim. You don't want any of that to be part of or in your consciousness in any way. Right? Spiritual truth is you are so much bigger than whatever anybody has said or whatever anybody has done to you. You as a spirit, you as consciousness are so much more than that. You know that this is, this is, part, um, this is a part of you that is completely untouched by what happens out here in the world of form. Your consciousness remains peaceful, intact, loved by God. So the spiritual truth is that no one outside of you can control your good. That's the big spiritual truth. Now, I know it looks like lots of people might be in charge of our good, but the big, big chunk up, the big spiritual truth is no one outside of you is in charge of your good because your good is ordained by God. Like Emma says, there is good for me and I ought to have it. You should have the good that God has ordained for you. Don't give your God-given dominion away to somebody else, whether it's a boss or a partner or just anyone outside of you. So to me, the blessing or the curse is in our own mouth, really. You know, the use we make of the law, what we say about other people, how we act, it's going to bless us or it's going to curse us, not because God blesses and curses, right? But because there is a law of mind and operation that responds to what we say, what we do, what we think. That's a lot of responsibility, but it's also a lot of opportunity. So the law is the law. It can be a blessing, it can be a curse, depending upon how we work with it. But thinking about blessing, I'll say this and then we'll pray. I think there really is only one blessing, and that blessing is God's love. And God's love is given freely and fully to each and every one of us. It's our job to accept it graciously and believe it. Let's pray. So we turn our attention inward now for a moment, remembering that right here where we are, the fullness, the allness of God, God's infinite, loving, intelligent spirit is right here. It's who and what we are. That spirit within us is the most true, real thing about us. We are emanations of the Most High God. And so in this awareness of our oneness with infinite loving spirit, I speak the word for each and every one of us. First and foremost today, that if there's any place in our life where we're feeling like we are at effect, that we are a victim of someone or something or some organization outside of ourselves, I claim the truth for each and every one of us, that there is nothing outside of us that has dominion over us that we are one with God, one with the infinite loving spirit that created the universe out of itself, and all that wisdom and all that power exists within each and every one of us right now. So for each and every one, where we feel perhaps the scales are imbalanced, I claim that that balance is taking place right now, that all things are moving into perfect alignment, and as it says in the Bible, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, we don't need to worry about anybody or anything. It's all in God's hands. God's handling all of it according to spiritual law. So I know for each and every one of us that we are blessed with this ability to evolve and heal and grow our life. That everyone has that ability within them and we make great use of it. We include in our prayer today our family members and friends, parents, children, loved ones, all of those we hold near and dear. And we affirm God's perfect healing presence is right there. That they are surrounded and filled with light and love. And as we raise them up in our consciousness, we know that they are healed and blessed. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world that we live in. So imagining right now that our heart is connected with the heart of every person on the face of the earth. And that all that emanates out from us is an energy of love and peace and healing to all people all people, no exceptions, that the God we believe in is big enough to embrace each and every one. And so we bless our church and all churches. We bless synagogues and temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths, wherever people are gathering in pursuit of the one. 
And so I give thanks that this is the truth. I know we are blessed by being together today, that there is a conscious upliftment and a healing for each and every one, and we say yes to it. Thank you, God. I release this word into law, and so it is. Together we all say amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. All right, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart, and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much.
can take Margaret home with you. <laughs> and you don't even have to feed her. Go to her website, margaretowens.com, and get her music. <laughs> Although I don't think she eats a lot, but... <laughs> If you were at the workshop yesterday, you know exactly what she was singing about. Middle of a miracle, the messy middle, right? Anybody remember that? Okay. Ah. We have some announcements, and I promise to go through them quickly, but I'll make them fun. Um, so you can give donations. We, 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 want, we, we want your tithes and gifts, and you can give those tithes and gifts over the phone for about 30 minutes after the service, or you can go to nhcrs.org slash give for either one-time or recurring donations, or use our text to give option by texting the word give. Everybody got your pencils handy? 818-457-3419. That's the number you need. Now, by the way, you can also shop at Amazon Smile, and I've been doing this too, and select this church, which you will find us under Church of Religious Science, North Hollywood, as the charity of your choice. And a percentage of all that money that you spend comes here. It's so easy. Um, at no cost to you. Prayer with a Practitioner is available after this service. Um, you, on Zoom, it's available. You just tell the Zoom host that you want prayer with a practitioner. Or if you are attending a service here, come up to the front. We have practitioners available to play to, well, they'll play with you, but they want to pray with you. Um, you can also email your prayer requests to prayer at nhcrs.org or put a request in the prayer box. You can call in a prayer, requ prayer request anytime. You just call the church and choose option four. Uh, this Wednesday is our regular Wednesday evening service with Reverend Sidney. That's me. <laughs> the meditation is at 6.50. The service starts at 7 o'clock. And my topic this week is full frontal God. When we expand, don't worry, we'll remain closed. When we expand our understanding of God, we expand our own lives. Are you ready for exponential wholeness? Just say yes. Okay, well then you better show up. Come on, action steps. I'll be joined by Reverend Mark LaPont. Uh, youth church is open. Isn't that awesome? So uh, we welcome youth of all ages for church starting every Sunday at 9, for, uh, come in at 945 for that. We have a grief support group that is meeting today on Zoom, facilitated by our own practitioner, Carol Winokur. It's a really good group. Um, the Essential Ernest Holmes class. Now, this is interesting. We have this class planned, and we have decided to move it entirely online. So it'll be a, on the Zoom platform. Um, and we need people to sign up. If you don't sign up, we will not have the class, or we can postpone the class. That's okay. We'll do it another time because we all know that a delay is not a denial. But I hope that you will join us. I'm teaching this class. Ernest Holmes is a founder of this church, of this teaching. And this is all about spiritual principle. This is sort of, this is full frontal God. This is learning about what, what he did and how to apply it. So I hope that you'll join us. It's uh, $245 if you pay it in full. You can pay it in two installments. Um, if you, if you want to pay installments, it's $270. And you can cut that in half at $135 each. Um, this is a prerequisite, by the way, if you want to be a practitioner. Um, that's what I want to say about that. We are looking for people to help host our services on Facebook Live. That's really fun. You just get to make wonderful comments and welcome people and love them through this service. So if you're interested, would you please call the church office? Uh, today, well, before and after our Sunday and Wednesday services, we have Zoom virtual patio. And every Monday morning at 8 a.m., Monday through Saturday, sorry, not every Monday morning, Monday through Saturday, we have Zoom meditation. And that's guided. And what a way to start your day. Uh, please visit our website, nhcrs.org, to get all the Zoom links and all the information about our events. And by the way, to sign up for our weekly e-blasts and our monthly newsletters. I think that's all I have to say, except I really want you to stand up so we can sing the peace song. <laughs>
please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I release all fear. I am living love. I am living love. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Here we go.